welcome to Sisters Conversations podcast with your hostess, Latrice Carter. We feature interviews in literary, film, and television, as well as real topics that impact the Black community. Welcome to Sisters Conversations with me, your hostess, Latrice Carter. This episode is our author spotlight with my special guest, James Ruva Kaba. James Lacaba is a 28-year-old writer from Eagle Rock, California. In his first book, The I Like Through the Pouring Rain, he comes to you with the true story of his and his fiance's battle with cancer. He relives some of the moments of their journey together before it was abruptly ended by his fiance's Annabelle's passing. James wrote this book to honor her legacy and to be a testimony to God that it is possible to navigate through life after such tragedy. James continues to tell stories with the hope to uplift others, give some perspective on life and walk away with a sense of inspiration. It is his desire to others to learn lessons and perspectives from his own words that will impact their own lives. After doing this, James will feel accomplished with what he has been called to do in life. So help me welcome to Sisters Conversations, James Ruva Kalba. Hi, James. Hi, thank you so much for that beautiful intro. I truly do appreciate it. Oh, you are so welcome. It is a pleasure to have you on the show today. So why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself, where you're from, what you do for a living, and what you like to do for fun, just so we can kind of, you know, get to know you. Sure. Well, I'm James Ruvacava. I'm from Rock, California, which is a small little community within Los Angeles. Uh, If you blink an eye, you'll miss it on the freeway. So it's a small, small little community. Um, Outside of book writing, I like to... I'm just a basic guy, to be honest, a very boring guy. I go to the gym, I come home, I binge watch stuff on Netflix, I play video games. I'm basically a man child. I still I still have outgrown these things. I still watch uh, anime and stuff like that. I still watch wrestling. I'm a big time sports fan. Um, yeah, I I really wish I could grow that face, but apparently at 28, I think I think this is it. <laughs> I think I'm gonna be stuck with these. Um, but for full-time work, I am a writer. So I am a writer full-time. Uh, thank the Lord for that. Uh, prior to that, I was working with the special ed community for 10 years. I did everything within the field. Uh, I decided to get into the field at 18 as an ode and dedication to my sister who had disabilities. Uh, unfortunately, she passed away about 15 to 16 years ago. But as I saw, my mom and dad really, really work hard to make sure that every day of her life was a good one. Uh, all the caretakers, the doctors, the nurses, all the people who kept coming in and out of her, in and out of our lives. Um, I saw the impact it had on us, the impact it had on her. And I thought it was a beautiful thing. Couldn't really process it as a child, teenager, but uh, kind of right when I graduated high school at 18, it kind of felt like the light clicked on and I went straight into the field. I graduated on a Thursday, enjoyed my senior summer for Friday and Saturday, and I clocked right in on my first day of school, <laughs> first day of work, excuse me, in my high school on uh, that following Monday. So I've been in the field for 10 years, but that's what I was doing prior to writing. Okay, okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. So you have your own personal story to share with the world. Why don't you tell everyone what is your story? And if you don't mind sharing the type of cancer that you conquered. Sure. Um, my personal story is one that really turns tragedy into triumph and that's a broad statement but um i believe we all go through our trials and tribulations and our ups and downs in life and with every single reason in the world to want to just stay in that space and to just stay not so much in a negative space but just in the raw emotion it hurts uh, kind of like every single day you have a you have a cut and you keep ripping the band-aid off it's it's painful and every single day we experience trauma in our own ways and uh what i wanted to do was kind of just put Ten toes down, as they say, put one foot in front of the other, and just turn my tragedy into triumph. Now, it doesn't have to be the big, glorious story as I'm telling you right now, but just literally a conscious decision to get out of bed is already telling that pain, that negativity, the circumstances that you're not going to get me today. And honestly, you have to conquer it one day at a time. 
Um, in terms of cancer, it wasn't myself per se who had the cancer, it was my fiance who had cancer. Um, okay. What she had, we were together for five years and she had cancer for three of them. Um, uh, just a bit of a background while, uh, you know, ruining the book a little bit, but she actually just had a routine checkup. She had a routine checkup and the doctor came in very nonchalant going through his notes and just said, hey, Annabelle, how's the, how's the cancer treatment going? We had no idea. That was the first time we heard about it. Um, so out of the three, out of the five years we were together, the three, she had cancer and it was diagnosed in the very beginning, or in, I guess the last year was uh, metastatic cancer, which is uh, stage four cancer. Um, they didn't exactly have it pinpointed because originally the tumor was in her private area, but because the tumor kept growing and all the other complications that leads with cancer, it just kept one thing after another. If it wasn't cancer, it was uh, buildup of waste in her. If it was uh, iron deficiencies, it was just so many things. I could I could speak on it for days, but I think if anybody has a, a background in cancer, they understand that like, there's just so many complications that come with it. Um, so at the end, uh, when I said goodbye to her, she uh, didn't exactly have one cancer diagnosis that did it, uh, or one, I guess, that kind of fit the picture or fit the billing, I should say. Uh, all The only diagnosis we received was just metastatic cancer in stage four, and the doctor said she should have passed away two years earlier prior to the diagnosis. So that's where the testimony of God's goodness comes in, because I could have I could have lost three years while I only could have been with her for two years. So the beauty in that is that we were blessed enough to be able to still enjoy each other's time and company and enjoy that relationship together for an additional three years. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, why don't, um, what type of person was Annabelle? Um, tell us a little bit about who she was um, that you loved about her. Sure. Uh, I think in the best case scenario, when you start dating, you try to find tendencies and similarities that are very common to your own and I try not to think about it too much but if I was to be a female I think I would probably have been very similar to her and vice versa if she was a male she would be like me in terms of the the hustler the go-getter mentality when it comes to work ethic uh both of us always work two to three jobs um uh, not even out of bare sense like uh a necessity but just out of kind of like the art the the mentality that comes behind it the the push the drive uh, we share that in common. And then just, you know, what, what really puts the cherry on top is the sense of humor we share together. We both are cheesy. We are, we are popsicle stick joke fanatics. We were as cheesy as they come. Uh, the pickup line I used on her to even get her attention was, I know we're not socks, but I think we make a great pair. And that's a, if that doesn't sum it up how cheesy we are, I don't know what else I could do. But she was a very beautiful person, uh, beautiful on the inside out, heart bigger in my head. And that's saying something. Um, she was, she truly was an old soul and a new generation. It is crazy in the new dating world as I'm starting to find out slowly but surely, but it is, it is wild out there. It is a zoo. I've been on record to say it is a zoo out there. <laughs> and to find an old soul like herself who had uh, old school tendencies, old school ways, and I'm not talking about just a domesticated way. I'm talking about just ways that where she, we would respect each other. We would respect each other's faith. We would push each other to get to the next level never to be satisfied. She was the anchor that you would always want when you go into dating and vice versa. I, I pray to God that I was that for her as well through the last month and that uh, we really did hold each other down like an anchor. Like we really were there through thick and thin, uh, happy days, sad days and everything in between. So she was an amazing uh, person and every single day I try to carry on her uh, attributes and mannerisms. So I can continue her legacy on through the story and through me on a daily basis. Okay, that is beautiful. That is really beautiful. So how did you come up with the title, The Light Through the Pouring Rain? How did that come to you? Sure. Um, you know, I was there were just so many variations I try to think of that would kind of put this image in the reader's heads where we just try to make a positive, uh, a turn a negative situation to positive. Uh, there were just so many other ideas I, I threw against the wall, but maybe that's the word for that word. Um, but none of them seemed to click, or if they did seem to click, maybe somebody already had used the title previously. Um, what I kind of felt like what, was was uh, going good with the point rain part of it was as as you kind of go through trials and errors or trials and tribulations of life, you kind of have what feels like your own personal storm. And it feels like the raindrops are just only dropping on the people who are under the cloud. 
And I thought, you know what? Pouring rain felt like, just felt like complication after complication was like represented by each individual raindrop. Mm-hmm. So I thought, you know what? All right, let's keep the pouring rain, the pouring rain. And then I was like, well, you can't say the sunlight through the pouring rain. I was like, that doesn't sound too good. Uh, the spotlight on it, the flashlight. I tried every every bonehead name you could think of. I tried every light. And then I was like, you know what? Let's just say the light through the pouring rain. Because I tried stage light, flashlight, anything with light, <laughs> I tried <laughs> my very best. I was like, this just doesn't work. But I was like, you know what? Let's stop confusing everybody. Let's just say the light through the pouring rain. And thankfully, nobody had taken the title yet. Or if they did, they have uh, they added an addition to the light through the pouring rain in their own way. So it was a true blessing to be able to get that and kind of use uh, symbolism to kind of take the picture of what kind of story you were going to be reading here. Okay, okay, that sounds good. That's that, that that's a very good title too. What does this title mean to you? Well, what is this? What meaning? when you think about the title when you look at your book what what does this title mean to you now now that it's you know published you have it's out there what does it mean to you it means the world it means that i came through on the promise that made her in her last moments um to give a little background to i our last moments together or wasn't i didn't know it was the last one until it was the last one and you know it's very hard it's kind of everybody's experience loss like what would you tell somebody in the last moment nothing ever feels good enough um so when i was caught up in the moment of hearing the diagnosis and hearing like yeah this this is it um i i was like oh well as i kind of watched the tears i try to gather myself i was like what what do i tell her what do i tell her you know i could only say i love you so many times before i was like you know what it just doesn't feel like it would stick so uh, we had a, a previous plan before the light through the point, very similar concept, same ideas, but obviously she was going to survive on the other side. And we were going to tell the story from the perspective of how does a couple overcome these things, same exact obstacles I explained in the book, but we would have had her perspective, her words onto it. So I thought to myself, it kind of was maybe God's plan or it was a light bulb that just went off into my head where it was like, you need to tell her you're going to continue the story and the legacy with her without her. And if you're going to do it without her, you're going to honor her. So mm-hmm. to come through on the promise and to look at that book title and sometimes I walk into the room through my house, honestly, it just I give a double look as if when you make a good body transformation after hitting the gym or something, you kind of give a double take to look at yourself. You're like, yeah, you know, I think I see something here. I give that same double look at the book like, man, I really did do this, you know, not that I'm this guy, but it's like I really did come through on a promise. And it, it's a beautiful sight. It's, it's beautiful to know that this story and her legacy will be here long after both of us are gone. Mm-hmm. So. It's a beautiful thing. That's beautiful. That is good. That's good that you sh- you you shared her story. What were the emotions that you were feeling as you were writing this story? Sure. You know, um, the biggest blessing and the biggest hardship of this book process has been uh, COVID and the lockdown. So my book process was already spoken, manifested into two years earlier prior to me writing. And I would daydream behind my desk of my job. So I would just sit there and like, what would be the perfect case scenario? And I would think to myself, well, I don't know. If I got to stay home and get paid, I would do it. And a uh, little before, you know, little do you know, COVID comes two years later and I'm sitting at home unemployed. At the time, I was in the two fields that were affected probably the fastest by COVID, mm-hmm. which is the fitness industry and uh, the special ed community, and especially the job I had at the time we were community based so we were we were out we knew about COVID in February so I was already unemployed by maybe leap year like probably the very end of February um so what came about the book is as I started like everybody else I gained weight I uh, I would eat pop tarts and wash it down with Oreos uh I would I just stuffed my face because I thought it was a vacation I just constantly kept doing it that way um but I thought to myself as I kept walking by the mirror like man you really found some weight you got to do something and I also thought, like, well, if you're going to do something, you might as well get started in that book. So when I put the two together, I thought, you know, let me establish a routine where I'll just go walk around the neighborhood. Nothing crazy, no runs, just a simple, slow-paced walk. And when I come back, and I'll use the high of the workout of the walk to really start letting the brainstorming and the ideas free flow in. And I use it as basically kind of like a diary. I just kept writing, like, oh, do you remember this? You remember this? I, just, I kept talking to myself. Just, Look, let me start writing it down. And next thing you knew, I'm not going to lie to you, three books came out of it <laughs> you know it just it just <laughs> did not stop and uh it's it was a it was a beautiful thing 
in my own personal life that COVID happened because it got this story to go out. It's my heart goes out to all affected, all the nurses and the hospital workers. My prayers go out to you. I'm very thankful that you're able to help people out. But in my own personal life, COVID was the biggest thing that was one of the biggest blessings. It really was a negative that turned into positive. Mm-hmm. And at the same token, COVID is the same reason why it's, uh, I came into the transition of the game of the book game where it comes to touring. Uh, I've yet to go into person to meet fans of people who are avid readers. Uh, I definitely look forward to that. But at the same time, it's kind of like the cat 22 of what COVID's done. It got me into the game. But at the same time, it has me not, has, have, I haven't fully bloomed, so to say. So um, it's thanks to the routine. It's thanks to, uh, you know, COVID. It's thanks to uh, everything that kind of allowed me to pour these emotions out. That's good. That's good. That's really good. Um, COVID was an eye opener for a lot of us. You know, it makes you think different, makes you live different. And it also opens your eyes to the, you know, life is short and you need to get yourself in order with God and, you know, find your, find that passion, find that your purpose. And it looks like, if it looks like you've walked into your purpose pretty much. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Thank, thank God. And then again, I always say, you know, Lord, watch all those who were affected by COVID. You know, thank, thank, thank the Lord that my family didn't get affected by COVID. I hope the same for yours. If they did, I hope they, a speedy recovery for anybody who did get affected. But it's a, it's a very thin line where it's kind of hard to say that COVID was the, one of the best things that ever happened to you when you know on the back end so many people have lost lives. So yeah. it's kind of been a real, real thin line. But that's why I always kind of have to say the caveat in my own personal experience. It was the best thing happened to my family and I because I was able to get the story out. But that doesn't mean I'm a big fan of COVID and the lockdowns right, and right. all the troubles that come with it. Oh, absolutely. 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 So what is the overall message that you like for readers to walk away after reading the light through pouring? I'm sorry, the light through the pouring rain. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, um, I wanted to walk away with three things. Uh, perspective on life inspiration and to maintain their sense of humor um i'll kind of dive into each one of them perspectives that you know sometimes uh i guess most times in life i think we take things a little bit too serious or we kind of let these situations dwell on us that are really not too difficult in substance it's kind of it's very easy to get caught up in the emotion or the heat of the moment to say mm-hmm. and with this book i want readers to have a perspective that you know what, let me look to my left and to my right and enjoy the loved ones I have, the friends I have, because you don't know your last moment was the last moment until it's there. And you're like, uh, no one told me how to handle this because no one knows how to handle it, you know? And I want people to just kind of enjoy their partners. It's not even just because I lost mine, but it's like to enjoy their partners. If they don't have a partner, enjoy what you have with you right now and how you surround yourself. If, if you're single, that's no problem. You can still enjoy your family. You can still enjoy your friends. You enjoy your job. And if you're grinding for something like college kids, you're grinding for the uh, promotion, anything you're working for to pursue your dreams and passions, enjoy that. Enjoy the process. Like, mm-hmm. Trust the process that you are. You have no idea how you're going to get there, but you just know one day you're going to get there. That's kind of the perspective I want readers to have. The inspiration, I want them to know that they're not alone in their journeys. You know, um, it's, it's, Unfortunately, uh, there's hundreds of millions who lost uh, their loved ones to cancer prior to us. There's some who lost it at the same time as we did and after me they'll be it'll just it's always going to be here unfortunately and i want people to walk away inspired that they're not alone and how we kind of handled it and i think the inspiration the sense of humor tie hand in hand here because uh the light is technically the sunlight through a storm and through the hardships but the way we use the light was to maintain our sense of humor here mm-hmm. uh we never lost it which is the beauty part like the real beautiful part into the we maintained it. Uh, she was still all jokes and smiles throughout this whole thing. She would laugh at the process. Uh, I think you and I kind of understand that, you know, the weight loss, the, the balding, the, all the issues and complications that come with it. And you have every right to stay down and just kind of really have issues looking at yourself in the mirror. You know, it's not that you're, anybody's not good looking. It's just like, it's a hard, it's an insecurity. Mm-hmm. You, you never imagine yourself to look like that. And it's, hard it is really hard to process that that transformation in the mirror so it was a beautiful thing that she was able to joke around with this she would joke around like i said i was an avid uh wwe wrestling fan and she would joke like once she shaved her head she's like hey i kind of look like your favorite wrestler stone cold you know something <laughs> funny like that she just kept going and just never stopped and 
if she was able to withstand a chemo treatment and not be sick to her stomach later that day, you would see her reflecting in the mirror, or reflecting on me at the gym, is like joking around. Like she just constantly would not stop. Um, maybe it was just her stubbornness, and in the most beautiful way, that's what helped us out. Was that she just was so naive to what she was really going through. So she really used her childlike ways, like how I do, just to kind of have fun with everything and take things lightly. And I think that's the that's our life through the point of rain, you know. But it's to maintain your sense of humor throughout it. Never lose your smile, no matter what circumstances you go through. Never lose your smile at all. And I think that's why I did here with the book. I hope that's what readers can take away with it. It doesn't need to be cancer, and it doesn't need to be death. It could be something small, minor, big, large, small, medium, anything. But as long as you don't lose your smile, I think you're winning that battle. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Did you ever think in all your years that you would write a book? You know what? A <laughs> hundred years, two hundred years. Like I, I never imagined it. Uh, I'll give you a bit of a background here. That uh, myself, I was. I like. Uh, I kind of get this question a lot. Like, oh, were you kind of like uh, a prophecy? Were you always a deep thinker? And I, I was a deep thinker, but like I, that didn't show on the test results in English class or my whole tenure year in school and college. Um, I just had no idea. Like, I really don't know how the stars align on this one. This was all God's work because I went through phases like everybody. I, w- I wanted to be a party planner first, and then I wanted to be a gym owner, a personal trainer. I wanted to be a special ed I wanted to be so many different things that book writing was not it. But there was just what God provided me just little substances here and there that made me confident in my ability. Um, in high school, I tried to, I tried to ditch a senior project. And for two weeks, I would purposely miss one class just so I would not go and do this presentation. And uh, finally, the principal grabbed me by, you know, the shirt and took me to that class. And uh, as punishment, he made me present the same presentation six times in a row. And it just took one day for me to understand how to public speak and the mannerisms and how to conduct yourself professionally. That stuck with me, but I didn't have any example after that for years and probably now and, you know, with this whole book experience. And then uh, secondly, you know, uh, I was in special ed English myself. I was in the field helping others, but I wasn't, uh, uh, I don't exactly have a real disability, but I just had trouble processing. Like uh, I needed more time to process and I had my own pace. Because sometimes I feel like if I blink the eye, I feel like I'd miss a whole school lesson in one day. And I was like, oh, my God, where am I at now? And so I didn't have this big buildup of things that led me to become a book writer. It just kind of one day, as I just started driving these ideas down after exercising, I was like, it really wasn't until I got some reinsurance from a, a fellow author yourself who said, yeah, this is, this is going to be something. But, I, you know, I, at any point, I could just give up and said that no, this is not it. But it was because that presentation as a, a senior in high school, it was because all these different instances throughout my life that kind of were like, okay, I think you, I think you could do it here. So I could, I should have given you the short answer to say absolutely no, we can move on <laughs> to the next one. But just to give you some context, yeah, I didn't see it coming, you know. Okay. I did not see it coming whatsoever. So I'm truly, you know, thankful that the community, the other authors, book writers, reviewers, anybody who's in the field has embraced me with open arms because with this background, you know, most people in any field would kind of just like, uh, yeah, we're not, we're okay. Like you're just, you're just using the platform and I'm not exactly using the platform. I'm just, using, I'm just didn't have a platform of anybody else who would help me get the story out. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to have to take matters into my own hands or I guess God said, Hey, here, here's your, yeah. here's your platform. So that's how I use it, you know, and I, I hope to God that I can inspire other people to start writing. You don't need a background. Sometimes you don't have any answer. How, how did I get here? But it just kind of happens. It's all part of God's plan. So I'm thankful for the community and to even be a writer. Absolutely, absolutely. So what keeps you inspired on this journey <clears throat> as you share her testimony with others? Uh, what keeps me inspired is, is it's always going to be the mission statement. So I, I write the mission statement I have written on my wall that I want to honor her legacy and to be a testimony of God's goodness. And I won't compromise and I won't, ever do anything to bend that line. That is my standard right there. Um, as long as I'm able to check the box there, I, could, I feel like I will never run out of inspiration or feel to keep going forward. As long as we keep believing in God, as long as we keep, my fiance is always going to be in my heart, you know, and no matter how high the story gets and how many pinnacles I find reaching, even if I reach the highest pinnacle, I still will tell you at that highest pinnacle, I would trade it to get her right back. Uh, mm-hmm. So it's not that I don't, I, like I won't cherish the, the blessing that God will give me, but 
it's more along the lines of like it's it's very hard to say something materialistic was worth her. There's nothing in this world worth her. I would give the shirt off my bag. I would do anything to have her back. So, with that being said, as long as I keep myself in those in that range, I always remember why I did it. As long as I don't get twisted or lost into why the, I started this whole process, I'm gonna keep pushing forward and keep uh, telling stories. I'm going to keep uh, writing on the other two or three books I plan on uh, releasing uh, really soon. We'll see how 2020 presents, or 2022, excuse me, presents itself and see if there's any opportunity there, if there's any uh, more demand. Cause I kind of just dropped this book. I just dropped it. Like I didn't have any marketing. I didn't have any hype behind it. I just said, I'm just so happy to come through on a promise. Let me just drop it. So I did it. <laughs> but, you know, if there's if there's a demand or there's more people who want to keep, if we're so interested in hearing my story, I'd be happy to share it. But yeah, as long as I can, as long as I don't steer away from that mission statement, I think I'm going to always be fine with my fiance and God leading me there. Absolutely. Absolutely. So with that being said, what advice will you ha- do you have for um, couples who are battling um, cancer? What advice would you offer those couples? Because usually when couples go through, um, when a couple discovers that they, that one of them has cancer, um, cancer takes a toll on the relationships. Um, and I'm a testament to that. Um, because not everybody can adapt or accept what that person is going through. And, um, it can, it can, if, you know, result in a relationship where, you know, you part ways. And, and I've been that I've been down that road um, because you whenever you go through something as life threatening as cancer, it you discover who your real partners are, so to speak. So what advice would you say? Um, what advice would you give to couples um, who discover that one of their you know, partners has you know, been diagnosed with cancer? Um, having stood by her side and been by Annabelle's side, uh, what advice would you give those couples? Sure. Uh, I'm sure there's two trains of thought. I think as both partners understand, even with ourselves, when the Annabelle tried to get me to like kind of leave her right before the process started, I understand the unselfishness that you don't want to drag somebody through that. You know, it, it's a very hard sacrifice on both people. The one who has cancer, one who doesn't. Um, it's very difficult, and I think a lot of people have all the reason in the world to want to turn away, so I try not to slap their hand, because I understand I completely get that side of the coin. From my own perspective, when I was in that moment, that conversation we were having, where she was trying to push me away from trying to, like, I don't want you to go through this, because at that time, I was 24, and, you know, like, most males, like, you're in your prime and stuff like that, but I, I said to myself, this is the one. I don't need to know about the grass and green on the other side. Because there would be no worse pain in my life to know one, two, three years later that she was gone and I left her in her, her lowest moment. I thought to myself, let me, what would it be like if I got this and she, would she leave? She absolutely would not leave. You know, I have enough self-awareness and enough emotional intelligence to understand sometimes what a female's perspective would be on this thing. And I know that the females are the backbone of this whole world. There's more females than males in this world. And we're not, we're nothing without you guys. So. With that being said, I thought, what would she do? She would not leave me. I know she would not leave me. I would do, I probably would have done the same thing. I would try to push her away, enjoy your life, I'll do this, but I just know she wouldn't. And I just think in a lot of females' DNAs, they're just not gonna do that. They're gonna, mm-hmm. once they love somebody a little, they love them to their very last breath. So I had that very deep thought while we were having this conversation. It kind of had one of those retrospect moments where I was looking at her and I just saw her mouth moving, but I was thinking in my head, like, this is what those thoughts and I was like, I, I just can't do that, you know? This is the one. There's no, there's not a two, there's not a three, this is the one. I just need one person to believe in me and that was her and vice versa. She just needed one person to be there for her at all times through mm-hmm. her highs and lows. So uh, with that being said, if any couple is going through that conflict or kind of thinking in their head about what side of the coin they want to go on, to be honest with you, you, I can't slap your hand on either way. I think it's kind of a morally conscious way, better decision to go support your loved one. I think because that's where we strive. We're striving for that every day to get be loved by others. And if you have the one that would not leave them in their lowest moment, but on the opposite coin, if you were to leave, who am I to judge you? You know, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not the, ju- the jury here. So I have no, 
no ill words to anybody who can't handle it. They can't adapt to it. I, I see your point of view. And for seeing some of the ugliness that I've seen in my eyes, as like some of the thoughts and memories that replay in my mind that I wish I could like kind of get out. I understand when I see those ugliness and I saw all this, I was like, oh boy, I could I could have lived life while seeing this. So I understand that that life is not for everybody. It really isn't. But you know, at the end of the day, it's like you you got to hold it down for the loved ones. You really do. Mm -hmm. uh, it just it's just the way I'm built. I'm from, I'm sure it's the same way you feel too. It's like you would have been there for that person. Unfortunately, you know, you went through it yourself, you know, I'm sure you had a thought of too, like, I need somebody to hold me down and be there for me. And if you look to your left and right, no one's there. My God, what a feeling, what a, that lonely feeling got to be mm -hmm. terrible and gut wrenching. So that's my, that's my help right there. It's, I can't judge you either way you go about it. I just only tell you about my own personal experience, but I see both sides of the coin and I, I support you either way. Whoever is hearing this, whoever is going to go through the process, just be there for the loved ones, you know, just be there by their side any moment. It doesn't have to be something above and beyond what they're used to. It could just be something that's like, hey, if you need somebody to talk to, I'm here. That goes, that means leaps and bounds ahead of other people because somebody's mm -hmm. just trying to do something for others to get a kind of a sympathy hug back in return. But naturally, just a hero do, will be helpful. A hug will be helpful. Just a, a simple cup of coffee will help. You know, just these little things in life add up and those yes. beautiful things really come out of it. So that would be my advice to others who are unfortunately going to start going through the process gone through the process or trying to recover from the process that's a, that's my two cents on that right there okay <laughs> okay so what's next for you as an author i know you mentioned you have two, two other books so what's coming down the pipeline for you sure i have i'm contributing to another book uh with my tour manager uh she is very wonderful she's she's time in the game in and out uh, she presented me with the opportunity to contribute to a book and to be with, uh, it's a Christianity book that gives declarations and examples of faith and how God has touched us in our life. She's, she's such a beautiful story. And she's allowed me to touch on this very same subject within her book. No one has to do that, you know, and mm -hmm. it's, it's, I'm so thankful to have her right there by my side to help me out. So uh, that book will be released in November 7, 2000. Uh, actually, this year, yeah. November 7, 2021, called For Such a Time as This. It's myself. I, uh, I believe I have another 10 authors contributing to it, uh, to her book. It's a, it's a beautiful thing just to see all of us from these different walks of life all have the same common commonality, with, which is God and the faith. And it, it's a beautiful thing. So that will be out November 7th of this year. And then um, for the Life Through the Point Ring series, it'll, it'll definitely keep continuing as long as the demand is there. And as long as people are interested in hearing it, I'll definitely keep pouring these books out. So I could, I'm sure all every single day we live, it's another page to our books. And I'm sure we could do, I could just keep yep. pumping these things out. Um, but if someone just want, if someone's willing to listen to it and somebody is wanting to listen to it, I'd be very happy to start going there with the second and third book. But until then, until that process happens, I'm trying to get the, the brand for this book and as much awareness for God and as much to honor my fiance's legacy as much as possible with this current book. And if that takes five, 10 years, 20 years to do that, I'd be very happy to do that because the second and third book are, you know, about myself and, and which is cool. I'm, I'm all right with talking about myself here and there, but I'm more comfortable doing what I started this job for. So continue to create brand awareness for the life through the pouring rain and for the, for such a time as this November 7th, it'll be, that's what it'll be going on for me. Okay. Okay. That's good. So tell our listeners, where they can connect with you on social media. And if you have a website, um, let them know that as well so that they can connect with you and talk with you and, you know, um, keep up with, keep up with what you got going on. Sure. On social media, you can find me at James M. Rubicava. Uh, that's just about on every social media platform except for dating platforms. You will not find me there. <laughs> um, <laughs> but Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, you'll find me there. Um, for as a website, it is thelikethroughthepointrain.com. Um, I used to do blogs and stuff, but because of work and now uh, more tours are coming out of this, is a tremendous blessing. But I used to have, I used to make it a blog, but now you can go onto my website to see where I'm going to be at. I have all my tour dates on there. Uh, from honestly, this day on, from today, all the way until the end of the year, well, I just I'll, I'll be on tour. And, you know, virtual tours, uh, going in person. It'll be a kind of like a hybrid tour and I'll be all over the place, but 
it's a tremendous blessing. If you want to follow along via website, uh, YouTube, what podcast I'll be on, uh, where I'm traveling to, you can find that all on my website, thelifethroughthepointrain.com. Or if you want to just see my cheesy jokes, you want to see my uh, me head ways in the gym, you want to learn more about me, like the, the man and myself, um, social media will be the best way to do that. So and again, that's at James and Ruba Governor. Okay, that's it. That's good. Well, congratulations on this story. This is a powerful story. Um, the light through the pouring rain. I love the title. And I will definitely be picking up a copy as well so that we can get that out to my readers as to uh, to my readers um sister's place has a book club on facebook um it's a private group called sister's place book club check it out drop your book in the group um you know there are avid readers in the group as well so you know you can get some um questions from the readers and you know an opportunity to share your story um thank you so much for stopping by And all of you book lovers, go out, pick up his book, support authors. You are an indie author. You self-published, correct, James? So, you know, I'm real big on indie authors because indie authors, we have to work so hard to get our book in front of readers. So um, check him out. Follow him on social media. I will drop his links. Um, to his social media in our in our groups as well as on our social media channels and don't forget to visit um, his website the light through the pouring rain.com is that correct all right Um, check it out Um, you definitely want to pick this up for all you survivors out there you got to share your story if you have a loved one who has a story share your story um, the beauty about writing is that your story will live forever if you write it. It will live forever if you write it. And James, thank you so much for still continuing to be honored, to be honest and sharing Annabelle's story. You're continuing her legacy. You're honoring her legacy. Keep telling her story because you are going to touch the lives of so many. I appreciate you. And I just on this uh, leaving note here, I cannot move a day forward with myself as James and the life of the point well, saying that I made a pit stop here and continue to tell a story. I cannot tell our story well having you in it. So thank you again for having me here again, for your listeners listening, the, the book clubs, everything that comes with Sister's Place. I appreciate the, the opportunity. So thank you guys again so much. Oh, you are so welcome. You're so welcome. Thanks to our special guests for joining the show today. Be sure to follow us on your favorite streaming channel so you don't miss a show. We can be heard on Spotify, Apple, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and YouTube at Sista's Place. Visit our website, www.sistasplace.com, to learn more about us.